This is a guide to help you write the historical essays and the discussion for Professor McEwen's history class. When writing an historical essay, you'll be utilizing an essay writing style called the persuasive essay. There's a very common academic essay style, so you might as well learn to write a good essay early. Do not wait the night before to complete the assignment. This will bring about undue pressure and lead to mistakes in a poorly written paper. Remember, this has been labeled as a college level communication and computation skills class. That means you have to have at least a 70% average on all your written assignments or you cannot pass the class. You need to get into the habit of revising your essay, writing and rewriting your essays until the elements are mastered. To do this, break down the skills needed to write an effective history essay into certain steps. The following steps have proved to be very useful in developing the skills needed to answer the essay question. When in doubt, answer the question. This may seem sound so simple, and yet students will not answer the question completely. If you do not understand the question being asked, you will not be able to write an effective essay. Taking the time to consider what the question really asked is often overlooked in the rush to start writing. Stop and ask yourself, what is the key word or phrase in the question? Underline it. It could be a verb such as evaluate, assess, analyze, apply, compare, contrast, or account. Often history questions ask, to what extent is a given statement valid? In what ways did one event or condition relate to another? All questions have one thing in common. They demand judgments about the historical evidence. Therefore, be on your guard for questions that start out with the verbs identify, describe, or explain. An essay question is never satisfactorily answered by simply reporting information. Such a question is usually followed by analyze or some other more demanding mental activity. Example one, consider for example, this essay question. Describe three of the following and analyze the way in which all three have affected the status of women in American society since 1940. Changing economic conditions, rebirth of an organized women's movement, advances in reproductive technology, persistence of traditional definitions of women's roles. Now, for this essay, it is not enough simply to describe changing economic conditions, women's organizations, and so on. You must also analyze the effect that these factors had on the status of women. Here is fairly sure guideline for any essay question. If you think that you can write an essay without making some judgment that results in a thesis statement, you have not understood the question. Here we see another example, the dreaded two-part question. After the kind of judgments needed to complete the essay are clear, all the parts of the question need to be identified. More often, however, the two, three, or more aspects of the question are embedded in one sentence, as in this example. Evaluate the relative importance of domestic and foreign affairs in shaping American politics in the 1790s. This question asks the students to deal with both domestic and foreign affairs. As the grading criteria for this question clearly state, if a student fails to deal with both parts of the question, it was not satisfactorily answered and could not receive more than a 60% on a 100% grading scale regardless of how good the essay was in answering that one part of the question. It may take only a few seconds to identify key terms and the parts of the essay question. If you take the trouble to do this, you will better understand the question and avoid the mistake of writing a perfectly good essay that receives a low score because it only answers a question that was not asked. Part three, organize the information. Many students start writing their essay without first even thinking through what they know, and they often write themselves into a proverbial corner. It is advised for you to spend a good amount of time planning before starting to write each essay or discussion question. The this fact indicates how critical it is to identify what you need to know about the question and organize your information. 
Another good practice is to make a brief outline of what you know about the question on your test or on a separate sheet of paper. Evaluate the relative importance of domestic and foreign affairs in shaping American politics in the 1790s is the question. So here we see a sample outline of the topics that could be treated in answering an essay question about domestic and foreign affairs in the 1790s. Now, listing facts pertaining to the question is to help you organize your thoughts. So you'll want to use abbreviation and other memory aids. The value of taking your time to organize your knowledge becomes quickly apparent. First, you learn whether you have enough information to answer the question. Second, you can judge whether you have enough support to the potential thesis. And third, it is obviously not very productive to take a position that one cannot accept. Based on this sample outline that you see before you, an essay writer should have more than sufficient relative information to support the importance of both domestic and foreign affairs and politics in the 1790s. In addition, they added politics in there as well. So, of course, the analysis of the facts should be the most important. Developing a thesis. A strong thesis is an essential part of every history essay. A thesis is more than a restatement of the question or a description of relative information. A thesis requires some judgment and interpretation of the evidence. The following thesis statement is from a student's essay written in response to the previous question. During the 1790s, both domestic and foreign affairs contributed greatly to the shaping of American politics. This statement is straightforward and simple, but it does take a position on the question. It affirms that both domestic and foreign affairs strongly influenced the political developments of the decade. An effective thesis does not have to be complex or sophisticated, but it must be focused on the question. Surprisingly, many students seem to have difficulty in taking a position. Some are afraid of making a mistake. Others seem afraid of offending anyone. A few students may not like controversy, complaining, why does everything have to have an issue? Again, we need to go back to the nature of history. History does not offer the certitude of mathematics or the physical sciences. In these disciplines, when a student is asked to solve the problem, the answer is already there. The student usually only has one way to solve that problem. That is not so in history. Disagreement over the interpretation of the historical evidence develops because of the limitations of both evidence and the history, historians themselves. I am not looking for necessarily for the right answer, but for a writer's ability to interpret the evidence and marshal historical support for that interpretation. Hitting them with a velvet brick. For a thesis to be well developed, it should have some power to explain the issues in question. For example, in the previous question on politics in 1790s, the same student continued from the thesis statement with the following. The young nation was struggling with questions such as interpretation of the constitutional implied powers, which created domestic strife. One prime example was the creation of the Bank of the United States under Hamilton's financial plan. At the same time, the United States was attempting to gain respect from foreign nations over issues such as British retention of Northwest forts and the right of deposit at New Orleans, both of which were crucial to the American morale and trade. The thesis not only took a position, but also offered an interpretation of events. This interpretation became the organizing principle that guided the development of the essay. Does the thesis take a position? Yes. Does the thesis offer an interpretation of the question? Yes. Does the thesis offer an organization or controlling ideas of an essay? Yes. Writing the introductory paragraph. Some students suffer from poorly organized essays with no thesis statements where they just repeat the prompt. An effective introductory paragraph usually contains three elements. The background of the question or your thesis. The thesis statement and the introduction to the main ideas or points of the essay to be developed in the body or supporting paragraphs. 
This third element is sometimes called the essay's blueprint for controlling ideas. By the end of the first paragraph, the reader should not only know your thesis, but also have a clear idea on the main points to be developed in the support of your thesis. The model, the thesis. The model for an expository five paragraph essay on how well an organized essay relates back to an effective introductory paragraph, this model also emphasizes the importance of restating the thesis as the supporting paragraphs are developed. Do not conclude from the model that the essay should consist of five paragraphs. However, the total number of paragraphs and sentences is for the writer to determine. What the model does suggest is that the introductory paragraph is crucial because it should shape the full essay. An effective introduction tells the reader the view you will develop in the essay, your thesis, and then explains how you will develop that view, identifying the main points you will be making in the body of your essay. If you, your introductory paragraph is properly written, the rest of the paper will be relatively easy to write, especially if you have already organized your information. In other words, try to answer the question if you only had one paragraph to write it. This is similar to writing a short answer question. So here we see the model for the thesis, background sentence, background sentence, and three points to make in the thesis. Now for the body of the essay, we see body one, development of the thesis. That's the first point you made and you're providing evidence. And then you do it with the next paragraph for the second point and the next paragraph for the third point, so on and so on. Writing the supporting paragraphs and conclusion. The number and length of the supporting paragraphs forming the body of the essay should vary depending on the thesis. The main points to be supported in the amount of the historical of evidence. Assuming a strong thesis and well-organized analysis to support it, the student must remember to include specific historical evidence for support. Many students fail to achieve the full support of an essay because they seem content to use a few historical references and assume the power of their logical arguments will carry the thesis. The amount of historical support is key support in grading the essay. This does not mean providing laundry lists or information of detailed stories. It does mean presenting a relative and analytical historical information that supports the thesis. Remember, the essay is also a measure of your knowledge of history, including proper names, people, places, events, laws, treaties, and movements. These are usually capitalized as well. Do not hold back on the facts. While length is no guarantee of a top grade, the longer essay often receives a higher grade because of its depth of analysis and factual support. However, the goal is not to fill up a specific number of pages, but to write an insightful and well-supported paper. A concise essay in which every word has a purpose is better than an essay bloated with fillers and flowery language in an attempt to impress the reader. In other words, this is not an English compositions course, but spelling, grammar, and punctuation do count. Some of the best essays I've ever read may be boring to read, but they are filled with lots of facts and specifically analysis. Some of the worst essays were beautifully written, but never got off the task to answering the question. Generalizing. Students that generalize their answer do not provide any facts or definitions, as we see in this example. Militarily, the Roman soldiers just did not care anymore. They took their money, did their job, and left it at that. Gone were the idealisms of old republic, some of the barbarians were at the gate, and the Roman Empire would crumble. This is a classic example of a generalization. There is a foundation, but does not give the reader any evidence. Who were these barbarians? What were the Republican ideals? Now let's compare this to the next student. This is what I'll be looking for in an essay. The student gives the reader concrete examples and analysis. Anyone can list facts, but it is in the analysis of the facts that is important to the student of history. Other suggestions to keep in mind as you start practicing the writing of history essays are, 
Why do I say it's in the third person? Avoid use of the first person, I, we. Essays in history are also usually written in the past tense, except when referring to documents or sources that are currently exist. The document implies. The active voice is also preferred over the passive voice because it is more effective in explaining cause and effect. For example, Edison created is in the active voice. Was created by Edison is in the passive voice. Use specific words that clearly identify persons, factors, and judgment. Avoid vague verbs such as felt and says and vague references such as they and others. Avoid absolutes such as all, many believe, and none. Rarely in history is the evidence so absolutely conclusive that you can prove that there were no exceptions. Define or explain key terms. If a question deals with terms such as liberal, conservative, sectionalism, imperialism, absolutism, or manifest destiny, an essential part of your analysis should include an explanation of those terms. And please, do not write according to Webster's Dictionary. Other things to consider. Communicate awareness of the complexity of history by distinguishing between primary and secondary cause and effects, between the significant and the less important. Use verbs that communicate judgment and analysis, reveal, exemplify, demonstrate, imply, symbolize. Anticipate counterarguments. Consider arguments that are against your thesis not to prove them, but to show that you are aware of opposing points of view. The strongest essays confront conflicting evidence. Remain objective. Avoid rhetoric, especially on social issues. The essay is not a place to argue that one group were racist. This term today has been thrown around so much that it has lost its true meaning, or that one group were the good guys, while the other were the bad guys, and do not use slang terms. Communicate the organization and logical developments of your argument. Each paragraph should develop a main point that is clearly stated in the topic sentence. Provide a few words or a phrase or transition to connect one paragraph to another. The conclusion should focus on the thesis. Restate the thesis in a fresh and interesting manner or explain its significance. The conclusion should not try to summarize all the data or introduce new evidence. No conclusion is better than a meaningless effort. How to evaluate and make revision. More essay writing does not necessarily produce better essays. Breaking down the process into manageable and sequential steps is one key for improvement. Peer evaluation of an essay as well as self-evaluation also helps students to internalize the elements of an effective essay and learn ways to improve. Have one of your fellow students go over your essay. You can also visit me during my office hours or send it to me via email. How to evaluate your essay before turning it in? The introductory paragraph, underline the thesis and circle the structural evidence identified in the introduction. How effectively does the introductory paragraph prepare the reader for the balance of the essay? How could the introductory paragraph be improved? The thesis. Does the thesis address the question? How well does it deal with all parts of the question? Does the thesis acknowledge the complexity of the question? How could the thesis be improved? Analysis. Does the body of the essay provide effective analysis of the question? Or does it primarily describe? Does the essay deal with a full complexity of the question? Does it acknowledge opposing points of view of the question? How the analysis can be improved. Evidence. Is the thesis supported with substantial relative information? What significant additional information could have been used for support? Errors. What minor or major errors in fact or analysis were found in the essay? Presentation. How well organized was the essay? Did paragraph composition, sentence structure, word choice, or spelling detract from the essays? identify areas that need improvement. If you're looking for help, here are places you can go. So visit the Writing Center at daytonastate.edu backslash library dash and 
backslash tutoring backslash writing center. Or you can visit the academic support center and email them at asc at daytonastate.edu. Better yet, make an appointment to see me. We'll sit down, we'll go over your essay or discussion step by step. Students who usually do that make, hello, A's. You can also email me your work before it's due at michael underscore McEwen at daytonastate.edu. If it's for research papers, they're due on Monday. Uh, you have to send it to me the Monday before it is due on Friday for discussions at Thursday before 4 p.m. I hope you took the time. I know it is a lot, but I guarantee you it will help you in writing better essays. Let's have a good semester.